Hello. We have two longer stories today. Our first follows a man who is peppered with farcical fines by a deranged HOA. When he points out the error, he gets insulted and goes to war. Story one. This is the story of how I completely changed out my community's HOA board and foreclosed on one of their houses after they disrespected me. Backstory. A few years ago, I bought my first house in a medium size, 500 to 1,000 homes neighborhood in a southern state. It had an HOA, but I actually picked the neighborhood because they had the lowest HOA dues in the city, the fewest rules, and the house was by far the nicest one in my budget. After a few weeks, I get a violation notice from the HOA telling me that I had two violations needing correction. My lawn was not green enough, and my trash cans were too close to my driveway. I was thoroughly confused about number one as it was February in the middle of winter. So of course my lawn was dead, like pretty much everyone else's. I had assumed that either this was a mistake or an existing offense from the previous owner. Come March, I got another notice, this time fining me for both violations. Each one cost me $100 and they wanted the money in two weeks. I was pissed. This made no sense, and I was not about to let them just try and get money for b violations. So, I called the management company that worked with the board to get them appealed. The lady told me that I needed to appeal directly to the board, and that I could do so in the next annual meeting in a few days. So, I of course showed up to the meeting. Prior to starting it, I met with a few homeowners and learned that they were all there for similar BS violations, and were pissed off too. I then talked with one of the members of the board about the fine appeals process. He was an older guy in his 70s with short gray hair and a very worn and angry face. He asked what I was getting fined for, and when I told him, he just looked at me and said, And you should get fined for that. Young people like you not taking care of their homes is the whole reason I got on this board. Learn to be a better property owner. This dude was the VP of a volunteer board telling me that I did not know how to take care of my house. What a sad life. The meeting then started and the moderator mentioned that since this was an annual meeting, we would be voting on three of five board members. They had some applicants to the board and we could also nominate someone today. That's when I had the idea of how I could get my revenge. When the election part of the meeting came, I nominated myself. Gave some BS speech about HOAs are not here to make money and that I wanted to serve my community. I won in a landslide, and you could see the board members getting annoyed because they had scowled during my speech. After the meeting, I appealed my violations in a very elegant way, and they agreed to waive my trash can violation. As for the grass one, apparently since I had weeds growing in my yard, like tiny patch in the corner, they were still finding me because the weeds were turning yellow after I sprayed them. I was dumbfounded how they could get away with this, but they used a technicality in the bylaws that I had signed, so I ended up losing $100. Revenge, I will be honest, I had not expected this to work. After joining the board, of five including myself, I was appointed secretary. I had to help maintain meeting notes and review records. They specifically told me that I was not allowed to propose new policies, but I could vote on new ones proposed by the VP or president. I later learned this was actually a violation of their own rules. I voted every new rule down as long as I was in that position. I decided that my best course of action was to listen to how the others operated and look for an opening to get each one of them off the board. The first opening came when the president, who literally looked like the most Karen woman ever, mentioned that she had wanted to find for flowers that were not a neutral color. Basically, if a homeowner wanted to add something like turquoise flowers, we would find them. She apparently had a neighbor that had flowers that she didn't like, and she wanted to use the board to stop them. It was pretty insane. I then started my revenge on her. I started a message thread, on Slack since that's how we communicated, with the other board members and asked what they had thought about her policy and reasoning. After far too much deliberation, Two of them honestly thought that this was okay. We agreed that the policy went too far. I then made a long post in the main channel telling her that her actions were not only wrong, but that she should be excused from the board. When she inevitably flipped out, I called a board meeting in the following week and the other four board members voted her off for targeting a community member for personal gain. 
She gave a sob story about how the board was her life and that the neighborhood was like her child. But I didn't care. That was one down. I convinced one of my good neighbor friends to join a little later on to take her spot. The next members I targeted were the treasurer and director, as I wanted to save the VP for last. They were actually pretty easy to get off the board because they were very easily swayed by public opinion. So, I made a fake account on Nextdoor and waited until spring, when most of the violations go out. When the letters went out, I looked for angry posts on Nextdoor. I then would comment on each one giving them the first names of the two board members as the culprits and told them to come to the next HOA meeting to appeal. It worked far better than I had expected. During the next meeting, over 50 people showed up and called out those by name. It was glorious. During the open session, community members grilled those two for their poor policies, even though they did not make most of them. The VP, now president after the other one resigned, tried to defend them, but ultimately failed. The two members were so distraught after the meeting, and I told them that maybe they should resign. And they both did. That was two more down, both of which were replaced by a couple who came to the same meeting and wanted to get rid of these rules. Finally, the board had been flipped to four out of five people wanting to get rid of all of these dumb rules. The president, however, was still the same old, angry, hateful man. He tried to add more rules to increase violation revenue and we voted him down every time. He started to get annoyed, but stayed steadfast to the board. I tried a lot of tactics to get him to leave, and not much swayed him. A few months went by and we started with a new management company. They had a much better style of property management and a website for looking through our community's records, as well as automated reports. When we got our first fines report, I hit pay dirt. The president's house appeared, and he owed around $10,000. Apparently, he had open violations that he had never paid, and the other management company hid it from the board for him, since he had been on the board for close to seven years. So I looked into remedies. Since his fines were over $3,000, our bylaws stated that a majority vote of the board could start an HOA foreclosure on the home, which I still think is insane that HOAs can do that. I got all the docs together and double-checked with the new management company that the fines were correct, which they confirmed. I called an emergency board session, presented the information, and four of five of us voted to start the foreclosure process. The president got angry cursed and left the meeting early. We were informed a few days later that the president had resigned, paid his fine, and put his house up for sale. While I am sad we couldn't force a foreclosure, at least he was off the board. I am currently president to this day and I have reduced the fining policy to be a maximum of $400, and homeowners can appeal anytime that they wish digitally. In addition, I have banned any grass fines until May, and trash can violations have been super relaxed. Moral of the story, never find me $200. Call me a stupid young kid and expect to not lose your house. In the comments, favorite aunt said, many HOA management companies get paid extra for each violation letter they send. This incentivizes them to issue violations for every stupid, petty possible violation. If the person appeals and gets it cleared, the management company gets paid anyway. If your HOA is bad crazy about rules, ask a board member if they're getting paid for it. I worked for a large multi-state HOA management company. OP replied, this is actually why I just switched to a new one. I looked for a company that specifically banned that practice in their rules. That was actually pretty hard to find. Evening Sand said, House of Cards, HOA edition. Marky Desaad added, lucky for those board members, there was no dark subway platform to stand on. OP, You really took this as far as it could go, which is fair given that this HOA had clearly tasked themselves with the full-time job of making everyone else's lives a living nightmare. Yet another example of power-hungry retirees and incompetent people with nothing better to do. But not on your watch. You took them out by following their own bylaws. Brilliant. Our second story features a road-raging Karen who gets busted. Wait, are they a Karen if they're not in a store? I'm not sure, but what I do know is that this lady is nuttier than squirrel poop. Story 2 This happened in early December last year. 
I'm driving home from school one afternoon and I accidentally cut off a lady in a big suburban. I quickly got back into my original lane and waved an apology after she honked at me. I was a bit tired, so I missed her in my blind spot. I thought that would be the end of it, but boy was I wrong. My one careless move triggered a series of road rage incidents from her that I never thought anyone would be capable of resorting to. First, this woman speeds around me and aggressively cuts me off and brake checks me. Very hard. Mind you, the speed limit was 45 miles per hour and I was already doing 50 miles per hour. She had to be passing me at no less than 70 miles per hour. I gave her some room in case she brake checks me again, which she did bringing our whole lane down to 15 miles per hour, all while flipping me off outside her window. I have a dash cam, so even if I hit her, I could have taken the insurance payout, but dealing with insurance is a hassle. And I love my car, so I didn't want to damage it. Other cars start passing us, so I try to do the same. But she dives in front of me again. Eventually, she lets me pass and I wave her sorry again, which she responds to with the finger. Finally, we stop at a red light, and she pulls alongside me yelling at me to roll down your window, you I'm not even black. Of course I don't, in case she pulls something out on me. Other cars are honking at her for blocking my adjacent lane while yelling at me. But she gives zero (laughs) Once the light turns green, I make a loop around the block to try and lose her, but to no avail. I even haul down an open road to see if she gives up. My car is heavily modded, so it can comfortably smoke her SUV, but she persists. I'm thinking, what kind of person has this much time on a weekday to follow someone around? Had I driven home, she could have come back later and did God knows what, so finally, I resort to calling the cops. Unfortunately, I'm right at the boundary of three counties, so I get bounced around dispatchers for about five minutes before finally ending up with the right jurisdiction. I explain my situation and the dispatcher directs me to drive toward the nearest police precinct while an officer tries to intercept us. (laughs) During the conversation with the dispatcher, she is still flipping me off and the dispatcher can hear her honking. That's how close she was tailgating me. It's been over 30 minutes since the original incident. Seriously, who the has this much time? I stay calm and continue to relay to the dispatcher where I am as I pass intersections. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, I saw a Dodge Charger speeding up behind us. I couldn't tell if it was a patrol car, as it appeared to be an undercover vehicle. No blues and reds yet, so I confirmed with the dispatcher if there was an officer behind us. It was. Once I saw the lights come on, I pulled over and she promptly followed. As I parked in some church lot, this fat dove out of her car, And only then she notices the Christmas tree of lights behind us. The look on her face was priceless. And what does this dumb do? She darts towards the officer's car. The officer quickly commanded her to stop, which this bag of meat seemed to understand. Not long after, his corporal and another officer arrived. Now, I'm still sitting in my car waiting for the officer to come to me. I hear the making up some bull story and in a few minutes, he comes up to my window to hear my side. The moment I stepped out of my car to talk to him, she yells at me, you suck at driving. (laughs) This was retaliated by the officer yelling at the woman. I told him my side and about all the brake checking and racial slurs and she obviously denied it. The instant when I mentioned that it was all on dash cam, her face went pale The officer saw all the brake checks, excessive speed, and tailgating once I pulled up the footage on my phone, and he then asked me if I wanted to press charges. Of course I did. They searched her SUV and found an unregistered Glock underneath the driver's seat and a tiny bag of weed, which isn't legal in my state. This woman got arrested for reckless driving, endangerment, possession of marijuana, and a couple of other things. I was just told to drive carefully with no ticket. Update. Regarding the gun registration, I misinterpreted it. In Georgia, we only need a firearms license. I guess that's what she was lacking, which made the Glock illegal with her. I'm not a gun owner, so I'm very unfamiliar with those laws. Sorry for any confusion there. In the comments, the love bub said, Do you have to testify against her? She go to jail? That was then. What is now? OP replied, Yeah, that's all that happened. 
The officer took a statement from me and my contact info, and I never heard anything else since then. Even if she did get out, she probably won't do that stupid shit again, since she knows it can get her arrested again. In response to, they searched her SUV and found an unregistered Glock underneath the driver's seat and a tiny bag of weed, which isn't legal in my state. Piehole said, It takes a special kind of stupid to do something that will attract the attention of the police when they've got this going on in their car. Original Iron Dan added, Never commit a misdemeanor while committing a felony. OP, you pretty much dodged a bullet here. Literally and figuratively. Thank goodness you called the police. It seems totally plausible that this wingback Karen could have shot you. What the actual heck? 30 minutes she followed you. It's not that she had the time. She just had the rage. And the gun to back it up. You're lucky to be alive. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now. Da, da, da.